Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Ty. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be comparing the Axie 2 antenna to the original Axie antenna. Um, we also are going to be having multiple side-by-side -side flight clips, as well as I'm going to get you some weights on these antennas. And we're going to go over all the different stats and my opinion about them. So stay tuned. Today we're going to be comparing the differences between the Axie 2 antenna and the original Axie antenna. All these antennas for the most part are going to be left hand antennas because that is what I fly primarily. However, we do have stubbies, we also have straight MMCX, we have the new right angle stubby which is a new addition that is only available in the Axie 2 line. I will be telling you later where I use that. And we also have multiple long range here. Um, as well as I have a broken long range to show you what the inside of that looks like. So first let's go over the stats. Now the biggest thing that you're going to notice is that the gain is different. It has gone to 2.2 as opposed to its original 1.6. We also have a larger bandwidth. It's gone from 5.5 to 6 to 5.3 to 6.2. Later we're going to be testing uh, to see if that is actually accurate or not. There is a couple other changes you see, and it says that the weight is one gram more. However, later on, I am going to be weighing out each and every one of these antennas, so you can see the exact weight for each. And for the most part, they are pretty close. However, the new Axie 2 is slightly heavier, except for in the stubbies. The stubbies are slightly, or just ever so slightly lighter. Something that I think is pretty weird is that it says that the axial ratio is 1 on both of these antennas. However, the gain on the new one is 2.2 as opposed to the 1.6. And if you know anything about gain, essentially the higher the gain, the stronger the signal, but the more narrow it is. So if let's say one is a perfect circle, then think of two as more of a flattened out disc. Now there is a lot of images showing the different ratios that you can look up online. However, to me, it seems kind of weird that it says that the axial ratio is the same. However, the gain and the axial ratio from at least how I understand it are tied together. It'll be interesting to see how these two compare in the side-by-side -side flight tests that I'm going to show you here shortly. However, one thing that I do think that this antenna does have over the original one is the fact that it has a larger bandwidth. Given the fact that more and more VTXs does come out with low band, though I don't recommend using low band since it is illegal, um, it should work better with this antenna, at least in theory. So if we take a quick look at the differences in packaging, you can definitely see that the new antenna has a lot more money spent on its packaging. The boxes are quite premium and are wrapped in a nice cellophane when the older antennas came in quite a few different packages. The stubby came in a hard plastic, as you can see, and the MMCX as well as the UFL versions all come in a folded cardboard box, which is quite flimsy. However, the print on it is quite nice, and I personally don't think you need much more than what it has for packaging. Long range antennas come in the same plastic bag with two staples and a cardboard uh, pretty much business card on the top. Another notable difference is that it has a new gumdrop shape. This new gumdrop shape is slightly bigger at the bottom and slightly skinnier at the top. You may have an issue making this antenna fit in old 3D printed molds you may have. However, this should be able to fit in most TPU since TPU is quite flexible. It is also heat sealed as opposed to clicked together like the old one, which means that it should be quite a bit more durable. The fact that it weighs more, I think, means that the plastic is quite a bit thicker as well. Let's go ahead and get into some flight footage, and then toward the end, I will be breaking down the different weights on these antennas. So for our first test, we're going to be transmitting at 200 milliwatts. We're also going to be on race 7, which is pretty close to the center of the band, but not quite. 
most people flying I don't think are going to be on R5, which is pretty much dead center of the, of the band. However, um, I am going to be doing most of the testing on 500 milliwatts at R5, and I even do some testing on L1 to show you guys how the low band handles. So in this first one, I do have to make a small disclaimer. The This is probably the only test that is slightly skewed. The very first orientation of the micro antenna, the micro antenna did not have to blast through the flight stack the same way that the OG and the Axi 2 had to. Um, in the first orientation, it was on the null side blasting through the stack and in the second orientation it was on the optimal side of the antenna and in the final orientation it was on the top null but with nothing blocking it except for the metal building it was in front of. Now for the rest of the tests I will be flying. This is a 25 milliwatt test on R5. In this test I am flying each time separately but I am doing my absolute best to try to fly the same path. Now I realize that this is not the most scientific and that's why I had the first test put into the video. Now I do want to take a second to give a shout out to Break Steel. Break Steel did do this test a couple of weeks back with the Axi and Axi 2 antenna. He did the test however on two separate VTXs on the same rig and he flew mainly in non-obstacle environments so he was just flying around in a big open field. Part of the reason why I did this test this way was because I wanted to see how the antennas did in a multipath environment and I wanted to make sure that they were tested on the same VTX. Now what I tried to do to make sure that my results were the same each time is that in between each flight I took a heat gun and made sure that the VTX cooled down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit before running the next test. I did this for every single one as well as the f before doing the first test I plugged in the quad and let it sit on plugged in at the designated wattage that I was planning on using for two minutes before actually flying. If you would like to watch Break Still's video, his link is in the description below. Now we just finished up the race 5 at 500 milliwatt test and we are about to test low band 1 on 500 milliwatts. Now the reason why we are testing low band 1 is because these new antennas say they go down to 5.3 and low band 1 is the absolute lowest band you can fly. Legally it is not the lowest band, it's way below the lowest legal band, however if you do have low band and you're using it you probably don't care too much about that. I am only using low band for the purpose of this test and this test only and do not intentionally use low band unless I am testing something like this right here. Now, I personally had to watch these videos multiple times to see any difference at all. I've been trying very hard not to say very much to skew or change your personal opinion. However, I do not feel that these new antennas are all that much better at low band. There is certain situations where I do feel that the new antenna did outperform the old one. However, there are other situations where I could say the other way around. Long story short, I don't feel that the improvement that is made here is that much of a difference to justify going out and buying this new antenna. However, when you do break the, your existing antenna, this is a great choice. I do recommend putting this video on mute and going back and watching all of those flight tests a couple of times to try to formulate your own opinion, but at the end of the day, the old antenna, you can still buy a couple of them here and there for $15. They are on sale. The new antenna is $20. So really, if you want to pay that extra $5, it's because A, the other antenna is either not in stock or the additional durability is worth that additional $5. Now, the budget brand of Get FPV, I can never say it right, I think it's Exolo has the old antenna design as their new antenna and they are only nine dollars. 
I would recommend picking up these antennas if you are on a budget and they do perform just as good or almost as good as the brand new antenna. However, I do not think that they are as durable and if you are planning on crashing on your antenna a lot, if you do a lot of backwards flying or if the way that your antenna is mounted, you are constantly striking it, you might want to consider the newer version for the durability factor. So now that we've gone the performance all the way, let's go over the weights on each of these antennas. The original stubby antenna comes in at exactly 5 grams. The V2 of the stubby comes in at 4.8 grams, making it 0.2 grams lighter. If you were to get the right hand, or the right, not the right hand, the right angled stubby, which was not available in the older version, it would come out to 6.8 grams. It is 2 grams heavier. Now, if we go ahead and look at the straight MMCX variant with the 60 millimeters of wider, it comes in at 2.71 grams on the old version and 3.06 grams on the new version, making the new version 0.36 grams roughly heavier. If we look at the long range antenna, however, it comes in at 10.87 grams and the new version comes in at 10.77 grams, making it 0.11 grams lighter for the new version on the long range antenna. I think this is because the heat shrink that they are using to protect the long range antenna does appear to be slightly different. Last but not least, the micro antenna comes in at exactly 2 grams with the right hand MMCX. Now this was not a direct comparison and one of the tests are should be thrown out on the still test where the drone was not moving. When the drone was facing the still building, the micro antenna did not have to blast through as much of the stack as the other antennas had to due to the fact that the wire was just not as long as the other ones. Other than that, however, I do feel that I did a pretty good job of making sure that all the tests were as fair as possible. I did a lot of flying on all these drones other than in these tests, and I'm pretty sure I can honestly say that the new Luminar antenna is ever so slightly better in some ways, however it does not have quite as circular of coverage and the knolls do seem to be slightly bigger than on the older model. This is the last little bit of DVR footage I wanted to show you. Now this is actually a different antenna. The one on the left is the original Axie, however the one on the right is an antenna that I am going to be reviewing for you shortly. This antenna comes in quite a bit cheaper than the Axie antenna. This is being transmitted on 25 milliwatts, and I do want to do some more testing to make sure that this was not a fluke. However, this antenna looks extremely promising, and I can't wait to show you guys in the near future. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. Alrighty guys, I hope that you found that information useful. Now one other bit of information I do want to leave you with though before you take off is that I did manage to break the Axie 2 antenna. However, I did not actually break the antenna itself. I pulled apart the MMCX. On this one in particular, the fit into the VTX was crazy tight which I do feel is a good thing for, for performance, but when I went to pull it out after uh, swapping it out probably about 10, 15 times, this little bit was left behind in the VTX. I then had to pull that out with a set of pliers and was able to press it back into this antenna. However, after that, I was not using this antenna for testing anymore, given the fact that that probably damaged it in some way. The antenna does still seem to be working fine, I just didn't feel comfortable putting any of this antenna into the tests again, and that is the reason why I didn't reshoot the one where the micro antenna wasn't behind the stack properly. Other than that, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys, so I get that to focus, what the inside of this antenna looks like. 
pretty much it's just a thin almost like plastic substance with little tiny strips inside it i mean I, I really don't know how to explain it it's super easy to break so once the lid pops off these things break extremely quickly and i definitely do like the design of this one a lot better it definitely seems a lot stronger so with that being said guys stay safe and uh, i'll see you all in the next one